Hi, I am in a strange place. I'm in my bathroom because if you saw the video where I dug out my dahlias, I decided to try and keep my dahlia store for the winter here in my bathroom. I'm going to show you exactly how I divide my dahlias every year. But I was going to show you growing them indoors also. I think I'm going to do that on the next video because it will be too long. But on this video, we're going to go over all of the tools that you need to divide your dahlias. I'm going to show you the anatomy of the dahlias, so you know where to cut and what to look for. And also to identify the condition of the tubers so you keep the best ones. Be where to cut them and go ahead and get the best chance to grow a really good dahlias, especially if you have a small garden like I do, I want the best dahlia to be able to put out there and not waste anything. We're gonna go over those dahlias because I wanna know how they're doing. I showed you one on the last video, but I haven't seen all of them. If you saw when I dug my dahlias out, I decided that this year I was gonna store them here since there's more humidity and see how they do. I want to try to keep it as simple as possible. I'm always testing to see what works the best. So let's go ahead and get started by looking to see how the dahlias are doing. <laughs> This is the one that I showed you the last time. It's already growing, <laughs> but it looks like they did really well. I see eyes coming out. And all I did was, if you saw in that video, I'll link the playlist at the end. I just used this paper, no vermiculite or anything like it. Here's another one. That one has already little stems coming out. And See this one? Also, it has eyes popping, so yeah, I cleaned them really good, so it's easy to see how they're doing at the end, and it looks like they all did really well, so I'm excited. I think this is the way that I am going to be storing my dahlias from now on. Super easy. Let's go ahead and take them downstairs and start what we need to do for dividing the dahlias. Here's some of the tools that you'll need. I like to use a Sharpie to mark my Dahlia tuber. And this is a permanent marker to get on my labels. You can use whatever label you want, a larger one, the wood one, skinnier. As long as you have a label, that will be work. And then your pruners, one large one. And then I like one that has a pointy end. That's really helpful. Some scissors are also helpful and a nice skinny knife. I cut a lot of it with this knife so you can use a dahlia tuber type of knife that comes but I've used it before it's okay you don't need to use it I won't use it here to show you you can do it with whatever you have on hand so I'm going to show you on a diagram the anatomy of the dahlia and then I'll show you on an actual dahlia so in plan you have the existing stem which is the one that gave you all the flowers the previous year Around it, you have the crown. So you have the crown, and this is the old stem. And then from there is where all of the tubers attach with a neck, and then you have the actual tuber. So this is the neck of the dahlia, and this is the tuber. So the next needs to be really firm because it's going to attach to that crown where all of the little eyes are going to come out. And from those little eyes, that's where the new growth is going to happen. So every single stem, you're going to cut a little piece of that crown and then that will make one new dahlia. Now you can have multiple tubers so let's say that there's three little dots like that. There could be multiple tubers in it. And you could cut this piece and have three tubers that are attached to that crown. You're always going to cut off the old stem because you don't need that. You need the eyes at the crown. You need a firm neck. And then you need the tuber. So this is the goal and I'm going to show you on a uh, existing dahlia, how that looks, because it may be that you have multiple stems that you have to deal with. And it will be the same process. You're just gonna look at where the P 
piece of crown is and as long as you have a piece of crown a neck that is really really firm thicker than you know than than a little thinner than this it can be but not maybe a pencil not any thinner and then a tuber all you need is those three pieces to get a brand new dahlia so let's look at it on an actual tuber so you can see how it works so here's two examples let's look at the single one so this one as you can tell here's the tuber here's the neck it's about the size of a pencil and here's a little piece of the crown and there is your little dot which is the eye this one is starting to grow so it has a little growth but you'll see sometimes little dots that maybe here's one um, there's one that's white so there may be times where you see white, you may see red, there can be different colors. But that's a sign of a healthy tuber. It's nice and firm. This is the neck is firm, the tuber is firm, and it has a little piece of the crown with an eye. Now there will be times where you want to get a cluster and that may make a little bigger of a plant. So it's nothing wrong doing only one. I do one. Sometimes I plant one and do two of them together. So I might put that one there and then I the other one I'll put facing the other way. So they're both facing opposite next to each other and I'll get a little bushier plant if I want. If I don't want to do that and I want to do a cluster, I can do this. So here's a cluster. All the tubers are healthy. I have a crown. And here's already an eye that's growing into a stem. So there's another little eye right there. And you're just looking for healthy tubers. This one, as you can see, is a little broken there. I may end up cutting that off. Uh, but you're just looking for a healthy cluster and that may give you a little bit bigger of a plant. Just a little wider um, for you to use. So all, again, that you need, whether you're doing a single or you're doing a cluster, is just tuber, neck, crown, and an eye. Sometimes it won't have an eye and that's okay. The eye will come and when I start them indoors that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm, I'm testing them to make sure that when I place them outside they're healthy tubers and they're growing a new plant. So let's look at them on a cluster. These are your clumps and what I do is I look in the crown which is where you see the tuber here the crown is where it attaches right there so you have a neck and then right here is the crown It's that circle that holds all the tubers together so you have the tuber the neck and the crown right here and that's where all the little eyes are going to come out and they're going to give you new growth so you need those three parts in order to have a new dahlia you can cut the old stem off if you want I don't bother until later. And then the other thing you need to know about is your mother tuber. So if you're growing a small garden, I suggest you get rid of the mother tuber because it's not going to have the same strength that a good tuber, a younger tuber is going to have. So I end up cutting these away whether they're damaged or not. I don't use them. So each one of these tubers have a neck and then is attached to the crown down here and this is part of the stem. Try to get some kind of surface that works good for cutting so you won't damage your counter. It makes a little bit of a mess if your tubers are not clean. Here's this one which is Romantic Mix. This is my favorite dahlia that I show you all my favorites. I can snap this here and that will give me, I can just put it on soil with a root hormone, dip, dip it. I'll show you how I do that but for now I'm going to go ahead and try to cut it. Go ahead and get rid of this little one here. This is the mother tuber. I really don't want that, but I'm trying to figure out how to cut it without damaging the tuber. Any other tubers? So I'm going to cut around it like this. There's Wrapping around. There we go. 
this part of it. Don't really want that either. Okay, now I'm gonna just clean it. And I think I'm going to cut it in half so I can get two plants. I'm going to cut it right through half right here so I can get this and I can get that. Two different plants. Try to be as careful as possible so I don't damage. There we go. So I have, yeah, I could probably split that too and get more, but I'm just going to do two. So here's one. There's one. This will be just as strong as this would be, as strong as a big one would be. So don't go by the size or the shape of the tuber. Um, only look at that if it's like soft, and that means it's probably old or it's rotting. So go ahead and get rid of it. Um, but it, because they're small doesn't mean that they're not any good. They're still very good. I'm gonna get rid of the area that has the stem. I really don't need that. Sometimes if the stem is totally solid and you see little eyes on the perimeter, then those are the type of dahlias that will give you new, new growth in those stems. But when they're hollow, see this may not be very good because it's kind of rotting in the center. But you don't have to throw it away if you're afraid that you're not sure. Keep it and see what happens. To me, this one is the one that's rotting. If you see that there, see how it's dry. So I'm going to split this in half. And this one is fine. This one is dark. That's not any good. So I have, I have these and I have this one. First thing I'm gonna do is look at it and see if there's anything that's damaged I need to cut away so there's like little clumps like this that don't do anything so I'm gonna get rid of those before I start any that have a really long neck and it looks weak I don't really want so let's see if we can split this with our hands It's really really tight so I'm gonna just force this a little so I'm gonna make sure because it's tangled on here so there's a growth there I'm gonna get rid of that it's not even a tour but it's keeping this from coming out there we go so here's one this is the pen hill and you can keep this just like this you look to see if there's anything broken. No, this one is a little weak, but they're all fine. So I may just keep this the way it is and just cut this off. <laughs> Things are flying everywhere. Keep this the way it is and you can't plant that. I may go ahead and cut this one small one back here. But it already has something growing here, but I can see some other swelling, so I could divide this even further if I wanted to, but to me, this is fine. Red dots, there, there, all of that. Those are gonna be new growth. So I'm, I'm just kinda testing to see what's loose and what is not very loose, because I have multiple stems on these so here's another one that one broke off and that may get some growth I kind of see there so I'm gonna keep that and now I'm gonna start sort of cutting some of these where I know there's gonna be an eye there's a little bit of a swelling to start opening this clump up. Just 
there we go. So all these little skinny things, I'm gonna get rid of those. Don't need any of those. And then this, as long as I leave a, a, leave a little piece of the crown right there, that's gonna give me a new plant. This one is really indented. It probably will grow, but I just, I just might try to not keep it. I may try to go look and see if there's other ones that are in better shape. This one is full. It has one, two eyes there that are beginning to come out. So I'm just gonna go in there and I'm gonna cut. You may have to get rid of a little bit of the soil around so you can see, but I'm just gonna cut in there. There you go. This is a perfect example. There's two swells. There's two eyes right there. And this is another another good tuber. So I'm cutting those stems because I there's a log growing in the middle, so I want to be able to see. I'm gonna cut this right here because there's a bunch of swells right here coming out there's the tuber there's the neck i love this tight necks when they're really tight like this that's a growth right there that's the eye coming out it has almost a double eye so i can i'm gonna go ahead and clean this a little bit and i could give this eye is for this tuber here I could split it right here and that will be another tuber here and then this tuber will probably get an eye so I could just split this right there. So there's one tuber, another tuber and another one and they will all probably do just fine. So sometimes you don't see the eye, and what I'm trying to tell you, if you don't see the eye, don't worry. If it has a piece of crown and the neck is firm, it will do just fine. And I have three more tubers. Okay, and this is really, really tight. So this is when you just have to kind of look and see you have eyes growing up. If you see, there's here, 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 here. They're all over. So I'm gonna go right in the center because I know this tuber here has that eye. As long as he has that one eye, it's fine. So I'm gonna cut it right, right here. There. So just keep combing around. It's a growth right there. There's the tuber. So here's our very firm neck, a nice crown with an eye. Now I'm gonna look around again. I see more here, and there's a space between these two. There's one eye over there. So I'm gonna go right through the center there because there's an eye there and there's a couple here coming out. I'm gonna use my larger ones. There we go. So I'm gonna clean Oh, this is full, that's one, that's another one. So I'm going to clean this up. I don't need all the extra crown, I really don't need it. There's one tuber here. There's one tuber here I really don't need. This tuber is growing there and there, and then these two are sharing those there. So I'm going to clean the top. And I'm gonna get rid of these tiny little ones, not doing anything, so I'm gonna just get rid of it. Sometimes if you have extra tubers, the, the reason I don't like to keep them is because they could go ahead and start rotting and cause any type of rotting. And uh, I just prefer to get rid of whatever I don't need when I can. I'm gonna trim this as much as I can. And I'm gonna trim, also like to trim the root. So here's another one.
and they're sharing there's one eye another eye and another eye so out of this pen hill we got two four five six seven eight nine ten eleven so you really can share a bunch of these tours with friends Hi, if you're new here, my name is Melba and I love to grow as much as I can in food and flowers in my cozy, tiny backyard. And if you're back, I want to thank you so much for the support of the channel. On this situation, I waited really long so my eyes are already growing because the temperature and humidity was really good where it was. See, right in there, there's one. So you'll see them right when you harvest in the fall. You'll see little bumps out, so it's easy to see them. Then they kind of collapse, and it's harder to see them if you don't divide them then. And then in the spring, they'll start showing up again. So go ahead and decide whether you want to do it in the fall or the spring. I wait for spring because they're super easy to, to find. Another tuber that may not be a good one is if you see your tubers and they're shriveled down like this one here. That's not a good tuber. That is pretty much dead. Here's another example. So those are not any good. I'm going to go ahead and cut those off. So the first thing I do is start cutting off my tuber. Everything that's bad, I'm going to just get rid of it. So these two I showed you. If it's really skinny like this, that is not going to provide, that's not going to have enough energy to do anything. I like the tuber and the neck to be short. So I don't like, like if this tuber is really skinny, I don't keep it. That one looks pretty firm and it's okay. But I like that all these tubers are really short and go right to the neck. It's a little harder to see because when they're close like that, that makes it a little more difficult to look at. So this is a little skinny. It's a little weak, not a lot. So I'm going to leave it. No, I think I'm going to cut it. So that's kind of judgment you have to make. If it's real skinny, see how it's peeling here and it's a little, see how it's crack, it's cracking right there. So I think I'm going to cut that off. And I'm just going to keep this one, this one tuber here. Here's another one that's very skinny. It's peeling, it's coming out. I'm going to get rid of that one too. You just have to kind of slowly get rid of the ones that are not viable. So this one has another growth with, within the tuber, so I don't really... So I slowly split them apart. I'm trying not to break any tuber. And I think I'm going to get my pruners and put them right there where I see that they're coming apart. And here's another one. This one, I can probably split this in two, but before I do that, I'm going to cut the mother tuber, which is, again, this darker. I'm starting to peel, so I'm going to get rid of it. And I'm going to clean this. There's nothing there. Part of that is dead. It's um, dry and part of it is... Uh, so that lets me look inside a little more. So I just split that one and here's one. See this is broken so that's fine because I have this two over here. There's a growth there. So let's go ahead and... Got that, and I'm just gonna clean it. So that one, even though it's indented, it's not. It's not like I'm gonna sell them. I'm pretty much gonna keep it because I'm just gonna put it to grow indoors and see how they do. 
So I'm gonna try to untangle these two. So there. there. Now I don't put cinnamon, I don't do any of that. You can do it if you wanna want to, you know, on the wet areas. I just let them create a scab and uh, they'll dry up and they'll be fine. I use plastic containers to hold them where I'm, I'm getting ready to place them in my soil to grow indoors with the label and that pulls me over until I'm ready tomorrow to go ahead and plant them. I don't need to put vermiculite. This is going to be just for a day or two. So nothing is going to happen to them just in that amount of time. Now so that I won't get confused later, I know this is watercolor, yellow, red. This I don't know the name of this one. I know what it looks like. So I'm going to put W red yellow and I'll label each one W red yellow this makes it really easy for me not to confuse them because I have so many of each and I'm gonna keep going but I hope that this was helpful and you're able to divide your dahlias easily but if you have questions please make sure to ask me and I'll be happy to help with whatever I can